good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on in good shape. And my guest in the studio today is a specialist in naturopathic treatments and conventional medicine, Dr. Rainer Stange. Thank you very much for joining us. Dr. Stange, going to the sauna is said to have really pronounced health effects. Which of these effects are actually scientifically proven? Well, most research has been done on the cardiovascular system, hypertension, uh, and in recent times on cardiac insufficiency, and then, of course, on the immune system, uh, prevention of colds and this type of thing. Okay, so you mentioned the cardiovascular system. How does that work? How does the sauna train the cardiovascular system? Well, when you heat up the shell, what the sauna does, your vessels will open as much as they can. When you cool down, they close again. And like it was shown in the movie, if you do this three, four times, you know, this is a training, like a muscle training. So uh, your vessels will be able to open especially, and this is very good in hypertension. Of course, like if you smoke, uh, this will, be, uh, will not happen, this effect. Okay, because that's the counter effect yes. of smoking. You also mentioned colds. Uh, it's said that people who visit the sauna get colds or get fewer colds. How is that or why is that? Well, this is one of the secrets of the body because all these systems have some interconnections. They are in a web, if you want to say this. Uh, so if you train the cardiovascular system and the vessel regulation, you get also down to the immune system. Mm -hmm. Is that the same effect visiting a sauna? Is that the same effect than a fever? Is it like an artificial fever? No, I wouldn't say that because... The core, as we say, of the body is heated very slightly. And those who do the sauna very frequently, even on the long run, have lower core temperatures. So it's sort of an economization of energy, temperature, if you want to say. So uh, uh, we don't think the core is very important, but the shell, the outside, the skin, and uh, the underlying layers are very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll speak a bit more about what the sauna can do for you, but I would like to know which kind of sauna. There's so many. There's steam rooms like the hammam. There's steam rooms in, in the Asian regions. There's the hot sauna, which we've seen in the report, the really hot Finnish kind of sauna. Which kind should you be using? Well, this is very interesting because almost any culture in the world, in their medicines, they have developed some kind of these things, as you mentioned by different means that they could find and that they could use uh, for the public. So this is a very different um, culture, uh, cultural aspect. Uh, we know most about the uh, Finnish sauna and the Japanese uh, steam bath, which is very popular there. But um, almost any culture has used hot water, hot stones, um, hot sand, like uh, in Ischia and the Mediterranean, and they all have shown beneficial effects, the old Greeks, the Romans, the Japanese, the Russians. Mm -hmm. So even it's really Af that whole in Africa, treatment. there are hot springs. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we'll get to that a little bit later, because we all, I'll ask now, we have a question from our viewer from Tanzania, Avid Kalima, has written to ask, if you don't have a sauna, what else can you do to get these hot-cold treatments? Well, there's nothing that exactly replicates it, but uh, physical exercise, sports, uh, do similar effects on hypertension, on the immune system. We know that, but probably not uh, all the effects that we observe, for example, for the skin when you do the sauna regularly. This probably can't be um, achieved by sports. Something else. What about hot and cold showers, alternating like that? Well, this is uh, like the Kneipp therapy in mm -hmm. Germany. Of course, this is sort of an approach, but here you have a lot uh, smaller differences in temperature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so the sauna, is it really, no matter whether it's steam or a hot sauna, but you mentioned it helps with skin conditions as well. Is that true? Yes. Well, like in chronic uh, inflammatory conditions of the skin, like in psoriasis, uh, this might be very beneficial. Also in atopic eczema, of course, these people who are heavily affected might have um, um, problems with using a public sauna, which are not justified at all. But it's still uh, worthwhile. It, it is that way. And last but not least, who shouldn't go? Well, there are very few contraindications, as we say. People who have very bad control of their cardiovascular diseases, of hypertension, of uh, arrhythmias, uh, this type of thing. 
epilepsy um, uh, shouldn't shouldn't go into sauna, and also people who have multiple sclerosis. Should be careful. All right, yes. others can benefit. Well, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for being our guest today.